Word problems in algebra are usually designed for you to be able to apply the concepts and skills that you have learned. And to make your learning more meaningful, these word problems are usually related to real life situations. But for you to be able to solve these word problems successfully, you need to learn the basic but very important skill. And that is how to translate mathematical statements into an algebraic expression. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Byrne and welcome back to my channel. In this video, you will learn how to, to translate mathematical statements into an algebraic expression. So without much ado, let's get started. In solving word problems, there are phrases that denotes the operation that you need to use. And so it is best therefore to make yourself familiar of these phrases so you can quickly decide as to what operation you need to perform for you to be able to solve the given problem successfully. And so to start with, let's have the phrases that imply addition. Alright, so the phrases uh, that implies addition are as follows. Increase by more than total of added to and the key words for addition are the following sum add total combine all together and so let's have the phrases that imply subtraction decreased by less than difference of subtracted from and the key words here are subtract minus difference fewer let's have now the phrases that imply multiplication times as much percent of product of and the key words here are times multiply product and so let's have now the phrases that imply division. The first one is quotient of, out of, divided by, ratio of. The keywords here are split, cut, average, ratio. There are also words that means equals. And the first one is is. Right, so this the this denotes, uh, or I mean, this would mean equals, and so the past tense of is is was. Sometimes the statement is expressed in past tense, so was, or uh, will be. And so let's have now the statement uh, translated into algebraic expressions. So let's have the statements, and let's have the algebraic expression. So let's have the first one. A number decreased by 6. Usually, we denote the unknown by letter X. But of course, you can use any letter in the alphabet. But usually, we use X to represent the unknown. So if X is the number, then you decrease it by 6. So that will become X minus 6. Alright? Twice as much as the unknown. So again, if our unknown is X, Twice of it, that will become 2x. 7 more than the unknown. So again, if our unknown is x, then you add 7 to it because of the word more than. So let me underline the word more than. Alright, so we, we had here just a while ago twice as much and that would mean multiplication. Alright, so that will give us x plus 7. So, 7 more than the unknown. Let's have, let's have 5 more than twice the unknown. So, first, you double the unknown and then you add 5 to it. Because of, again, the word more than. So, twice the unknown, that's 2x, and then you add 5. So, that's 2x plus 5. Let's have here uh, about age. David's age, which is represented by x, Five years from now. Five years from now, that means it's going to be uh, addition. Five years from now. So, if the age of David is X, then you add 5 to it. So, that will be X plus 5. And let's have Daryl's age, which is again represented by X, 
10 years ago 10 years ago mean to say 10 years have passed already so if Daryl's age is X then you subtract 10 to it all right let's have here separate 15 into two parts so of course the first one is uh, the X and that X is the uh, the first part and then 15 minus X is the second part all right let's have here distance traveled in X hours at 30 kilometers per hour well distance is actually rate times time so you simply multiply the rate and then the time but time here is unknown so we will have 30 X all right let's have more examples Two consecutive integers so two consecutive integers can be denoted by x and of course the next one should be x plus one all right how about two consecutive even integers so of course the first one is x and then the next one is x plus two because the difference between uh, the consecutive integers is two so you add two to the first number the same is true in consecutive odd integers, right? So, we will have x and x plus 2 also. How about interest on x pesos for one year at 7%? Well, interest is actually principal times the rate times the time, right? So, that would be 0.07x because the 7% here is expressed in decimal, right? So, that's going to be... Uh, 0 0.07 and then one here of course it's understood that this, the, there is one here okay so 0 0.07 times 1 times x so that's the interest of x pesos for one year at 7% so let's have here 20,000 pesos separated into two investments so we will have the first one is x and you subtract that x from the 20,000 so that's going to be 20,000 minus X let's have distance traveled in 40 minutes at X kilometers per hour again distance is rate times time uh, distance is rate times time but here time is expressed in minutes so you have to convert this into hours so that is simply 40 divided by 60 all right so that will be uh, 2x over 3 Okay, because if you're going to simplify 40 over 60, that's uh, going to be 2 over 3 times the uh, x kilometers per hour. So let's have the quotient of a number and 9. So the, the keyword here is quotient. Okay, so that will give us x over 9. Let's have here, 5 is 4 more than a number. Alright, so how do we translate that into algebraic expression? Of course, if the number is represented by x, then uh, 4 more than. So, 5 here, and we have here the word is, that means equal or equals. We have 4 more than a number. So, x is the number, then we have the word more than, and more than 4, so x plus 4. So, 5 is... Uh, a number more than four all right so these are example of uh, how you can how you translate uh, mathematical statements into algebraic expressions but how do you start solving a word problem so let's have here some examples so let's have number one one number tries another all right so this means that there are two numbers so you let the first number or you let the smaller number represented by x and the second number is thrice the other all right so thrice that means 3x and that's going to be the larger number let's have example number two mr jockno is three years older than twice his son's age all right so how do we represent this of course you let x equals the son's age okay and when you get and when you're able to get the age of the son uh, of son's age then uh, it would be easy for you to find the age of mr. Jokno because 
Mr. Jokno is actually three years older than twice his son. Okay, let's have we have here the word twice. All right. So twice. So you double the age of the son, and then you add three years to that, and that's going to be the age of Mr. Jokno. So how do we represent that? Right. It is going to be two x plus three, and that's going to be Mr. Jokno's age. So twice the age of the son, which is x. Okay. So twice of that is 2x plus 3 because uh, he is 3 years older than twice his son. So this is how you represent it. So let's have here another example. The sum of two numbers is 84. One number is twice the other. What are the numbers? Alright. And so we are to find two numbers. Alright. And the sum of those two numbers should be 84. So how do we represent this? Okay, so let x the smaller number, okay, but the problem states that one number is twice the other. So if the smaller number is x, twice of it, that's going to be the larger number. All right. So let's have now the solution. So how do we do this? So since the sum, okay, the keyword here is sum, is 84. All you have to do is to add this two numbers so x plus 2x should be equal to 84 now you add x plus 2x and that will give you 3x equals 84 for you to be able to solve the value of x then you multiply both uh, you divide both sides by 3 so okay that will be 84 divided by 3 is actually 28 okay so twice the smaller so that will give you 2x, so twice of 28, and that will give you 56. This means that 28 here is the smaller number, and uh, 56 is the larger number. So how do you check uh, if your answer is correct? So again, the problem states that the sum of two numbers is 84. So if you're going to add these two numbers, the sum should be 84, right? So this will give us 14 carry 1, and that will give us... 84 therefore our answers are correct so this is how you uh, translate uh, statements mathematical statements into algebraic expressions so if you are able to master this then it would be easy for you to solve any word problems in algebra all right so i hope you like this video and if you like this video again i would appreciate if you uh, click the subscribe button in the notification bell and I will be uploading more videos related to solving word problems in algebra. So thank you for your time again and I hope to see you in my next video.